When we think about constructing our programs and what we want to do to try to accomplish our goals in any given program, we want to think in terms of what type of object are we working with and what methods or other features does the object have that can allow us to achieve our goals or take the next step towards reaching our goals. Again, you know you're going to be writing outlines that put these features into combination uh, to achieve a particular purpose. Um, so I want you always to have the feature summary by your side so you can refer to it. It both tells you what goes into and comes out of each feature, uh, but also shows us um, a good example or examples of how to use it. Now the first thing we're going to look at is the file object. File object has three specific methods that allow us to access the data in a file, and that's what we're looking to do. These are three convenient methods that allow us to access the data in a file. Now the object itself, this file object, which I'm calling a file object in quotes because these days it's actually not even called one a file, it's actually called a text IO wrapper. I find that kind of annoying because it used to be called a file object, which is basically what it is. But uh, because of the Python 3, the way they changed it, they decided to call it a text IO wrapper. You have to understand that this object is not the text of the file. This does not read the file for you. This object is designed to allow you to read the file, but it's not the file. It's a file object that is basically just a uh, special object that allows us access. So in order to get data from the file, we have to use one of a number of methods. If we can do that, now I'm going to use the uh, PyQ file. If you know what the PyQ file is, it's just a three-line file that has uh, a, a haiku in it. I wrote the haiku, by the way. I think it's quite clever. Um, now the first method that we want to look at is called the read method. Read will allow us to um, uh, view the entire file or really get back um, uh, the entire file as a single string. So that means text is a string. Text is a string that contains the entire text of the file. And as you can see, I am printing the entire text of the file. It's the whole file. If we look at the file, you'll see that it's, uh, it's just a three-line file uh, that uh, uh, I'm reading here. So here's the file, and here is the text of the file that we're getting from the dot .read method. The next method that we'll look at, and so it's a string. Now, what can you do with a string? You already know you can do a bunch of things with a string, but we're going to learn some other things this week. You can uppercase the string. You can count the um, count the number of occurrences of a of a word in a string. Think about all the things that you can do with a string. You can now do that with the text of the file. The way you want to order your thinking is in terms of what are these objects and what can they do. And once I have an object of a particular type, what then can I do to take the next step? That's the way you always want to think. And the thought process is going to be identical to the process that you used to do the tidy border. I started with a string. I know I have to raise these two number values one uh, to the power of the other but I'm working with strings how can I get these strings into numeric form I have the int function I'll use the int function that's the process that you take now one thing I want to make absolutely clear and that is that you can only read a file once I'll say that really loudly because um, People forget it and it can make for some very difficult bugs. You don't really understand why you're getting nothing back. You won't get an error, but you can only read a file once. If you want to read the file again, you can open it again. Now, what are we doing with open? We're getting back this file object. We give it a file name. Now, if it was uh, elsewhere in our system, we might need to um, give it a file path. But the, the file name or file path is just a simple string, and we're assuming that the file is in our own current directory. And for our, for our beginning experiences, we can assume that. So read gets us the file as an entire single string. The entire file is a string. The next method we're going to look at is called read lines. Read lines gives us, 
should just leave this off. Read lines gives us um, a list of strings. That is, and if I print lines, you'll see it. We haven't looked at the list yet. But if you look closely, you can see here's one line of the file ending in a new line. Here's the next line of the file ending in a new line. Here's the next line of the file ending in the new line. Now we haven't looked at this list yet to see its syntax, but you can see it pretty clearly uh, if you look at it. You can see a square bracket, and then what does that look like? A string, and it has a new line at the end. That is a line from the file. Now I showed you the file text in the previous video. You can see that what Python did was it read the file until it got to a new line character, and when it got to that character, it said, okay, that's one item in my list. I'm going to make a string. And so it made it the first item in the list. Now we haven't looked at the list yet, but we're going to look at ways we can manipulate the list. And this will be yet another step in the step of uh, the sequence of steps that you'll need to take in order to accomplish certain things using Python and reading files. So that's read lines. Now notice that I'm commenting out read and read lines in order to go to the next, uh, the next feature for reading. Why? Because you can only read a file once you can only read a file one time. And if you want to read it again, you need to reopen it. Make sense? Okay, so we've got two ways to read a file so far. One is read and it gets us back the entire file as a string. The next is read lines and it gets us back the entire file as a list of strings. Now the next one is even more challenging because what it's going to do, we're going to introduce a new block statement. Last week, we looked at the block statements if, elif, else, and while. This week, we're looking at a block statement called for. For gives us each line in the file, one at a time, as a string. The string line represents a line from the file. Now, how do we know where a line begins and ends in a file? You know it's the new line character. So what Python does when it reads a file is that it looks at each character in the file until it gets to the new line character. When it gets to the new line character, it says, okay, that's it, I've got a line. So what we're seeing when we look at my line in FH is we're seeing Python looking for a line, finding a line, and then saying, okay, that's a line. I'm going to assign it to my line. Now, what is my line? My line is simply a variable that I named. When we use it in a for construct, what we're saying is, when we use a file object in a for construct, what we're saying is, read the file until you get to a new line character, then assign that string to my loop variable. We call it a loop variable, sometimes called a control variable. This variable is holding the one line of text. Now you may ask, if it's holding only one line of text, what good is that? I'm probably gonna be interested in every line of the text, absolutely. This is a loop block. For is a loop block. So it's a loop block in the same way that while is a loop block. When we loop over a file line by line, what we're getting is each line as a single string. Then the block executes. So if we're interested in seeing each line of the file, we certainly can. We begin by opening the file and getting back a file object. And then we say for variable name in FH. Why don't I just call this var? For var in FH, now what does var contain? It contains one line from the file. Var contains one line from the file. Then Python executes the for block. It executes line 10, line 11, line 12, and then it jumps back up to line 10. It grabs the next line from the file, that is everything up to the very next new line character, and then it assigns it back to var. 
In other words, var is receiving each line in the file one after the other. And what type of object is var? Can you tell from the way I've written it here? Var is a string. So what the loop block does is iterate over the file object. For each line in the file, Python assigns the line to var. It then executes the loop block. Now you can see that the block consists of two lines. Why don't I print done down here? The block consists of two lines, and each line in the block is executed once for every line in the file. Python assigns each line in the file to the loop variable. It then, let's see, the line is a string. Here it is called var. That's the loop variable. It then executes the loop block. Here, two lines. So Python goes 13, 14, 15, 13, 14, 15, 13, 14, 15, and then it keeps, uh, and then if the file has three lines, it's then going to stop. So let's see what we get when we run this. We get, we're out of Gouda, then uh, uh, a um, border. This parrot has ceased to be a border, spam, 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 and then another border. Actually, I'd like to put the border ahead of the line so we can see a little more of the structure. We're out of Gouda. So line, we're out of Gouda. Line, this parrot has ceased to be. Line, spam, 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 spam. Of course, as you know, the file has three lines. There they are. Since the file has three lines, what we're seeing is the loop block executing once for each line in the file. And that's how for looping works. So to sum up, when you're reading a file, you have choices. You can choose to read the file as a single string. You'll use the read method. You can choose to read the file as a list of strings. That is, every line is a single string. And you'll use the read lines method. Or you can use the for block to loop through and read each line in the file one by one. What you choose depends entirely on what you're doing. And we're going to look at different applications for these methods to accomplish various homework assignments.